So for today's video, I'm going to review a research article, The Neural Representation of Intrusive Thoughts. I'm going to give you the basic conclusions and, and go into why it's important. Because so many videos, I don't know, last 10 or so videos, we've been deconstructing the thought process. Not for philosophical purposes, which would be fun, but this is more practical. So, you know, if it was just thinking, who cares unless you're a philosopher? But when we talk about intrusive thoughts, that's when we start getting to suffering and we start getting to what stands between us and an otherwise perfect fine day. And in the study, they looked at people over, I think it was 100 days, so it was a really long period of time, and they were looking at thoughts and intrusive thoughts, and then they got them into the fMRI equipment and measured brain activation. So what they found is that in, uh, intrusive thoughts did seem to have a linguistic nature to it. And one of the ways that they backed this up is by measuring brain activation. What they found is that people who had the most intrusive thoughts had greater activation in the left uh, speech area, something called Broca's area, which controls overt speech. So Broca's area is allowing me to talk and make this video, but it's also active when we do inner speech. And so that was a really important finding. But something else they found that, that was really interesting is that people who used the voice in the head to a greater degree, also had more intrusive thoughts. And so that is interesting because so often we daydream or we mind wander and it seems so innocent. It just seems like, well, what, you know, this is, I'm just thinking about what I might be doing tomorrow. But this paper, if it's on to something, the, the idea is that, um, you're, you're priming that neural equipment. And if you prime it all the times, it may seem innocent when you're just daydreaming, that sets you up where at some point you're going to, uh, the, the dues for the theater will, ex, you know, exact its payment on you. And so uh, the neural representation of intrusive thoughts, I'll put a link in the description. You can check it out. But the exercise I wanted to do was to show that connection between language and thinking. And one of the things that becomes really obvious about the limitations of language is that you could only say and read one word at a time. You could only listen to one word at a time. It's a fundamental limitation of language. And of course, that fits the limited attention system in the left brain. And, and that's probably why uh, the left brain took language in the first place. So for the exercise, it, it seems kind of simple on the surface, but when you get into trying it, you'll, you'll see almost immediately how you will fail. And all you have to do is to think two thoughts at once. So they don't have to be intrusive thoughts. Uh, they could be anything you want. Uh, but think two thoughts at the same time. See how that works out. Leave some uh, something in the comments because... Maybe you can think three thoughts at once. Uh, maybe it's just me. But um, try it out. Let me know what you come up with.